Yeah, what's going on? I'm going to uh, talk about the uh, Nefertiti uh, bust and the Negro Freemasons that uh going to have, have a lot of explaining to do about why they still worship their uh, white masters, even though their white masters keep shitting on them. First of all, how many busts can they keep coming up with? <laughs> That's number one. Uh, like I keep telling you, the white man lies. The white man wants you to suspend what your eyes see and what your common sense, sense is telling you. And he wants you to believe him, believe his lies that he created for you. These are newly created lies. So why should we believe him over the actual Egyptians and how they uh, represented themselves? If it were up to the white man, they'd all be uh, uh, white skinned, blue eyed people with blonde dreadlocks and blonde afros if it was up to the white man. Uh, <laughs> but see, it's the white man who has the obsession with black people, as you can see in this country. Uh, like I always point out, and I'm sure all of you are probably tired of seeing, everywhere you look, it's black this, black that. Black rap, black uh, movies, Black Panther, Black slave this. I mean, every time you turn around, you can't escape the media, the Internet, whatever web page you're on. This black person said this. Uh, Boston and its racism by putting Red Auerbach uh, and celebrating him for Black History Month. I mean, it, I mean it's nonstop obsession. A lot of the black scholars have already proven, even though the, you know, the black scholars didn't even have to prove a damn thing because your eyes, the ancient Egyptians, show what the hell they were. So that's the thing about the ancient Egyptians. And that's the thing about the artifacts that they left behind. You know, it's like everything works in a process, in an order. What that final order is all about, none of us knows. And if anyone is acting like they do know they're out of their minds. And if they do think they do know, present the proof, uh, present the proof uh, for it. So here's the deal. Everything is in order. You, if you notice with empires, people, everything happened in an order. Everybody had their chance to rule, so to speak. Just like in, in a sports team. Everybody had their chance to win, win a title or dominate their era. Okay, everything started in Africa. Life started in Africa. And no, I'm not Afrocentric. I'm just pointing out the facts as we know it, as what was presented by the white man. He says life, human life, modern human life, actual human, started in Africa. Logically, if humans started in Africa, now the white man says about a million years ago, common sense would tell you the first civilizations are, are black people. <laughs> I mean, that, that's common sense. Why would the first person... Now, here's the other thing before I go there. We already know that the white man says that that the white man only goes back around six to ten thousand years ago so again if the white man says this and he says the black man he doesn't like to say black man but in Africa imply blackness there are two types of uh, blacks that were around from the beginning mainly it's the Bushman type the son or I don't like to give a particular type but you know the dark skinned black man those were the two types of Africans. Now, people say that these are the two types that uh, filled humanity, which is believable. I mean, you can see with the San Bushman people, you can see clearly see all the Asian prototyping on these people. That can't be denied from the skin to the face to the features. Only difference is the hair. But of course, if you look back further enough with uh, in Asia, you can see that indeed the, the Chinese 
And, I, and the Asians, they started at, out as black. I mean, there, there's no question about that. You know, it, it's not like... I used to say, nah, these people are bullshitting back in the days when I was in, a teenager. Well, I used to see all these guys talking about black this, everybody was black. I'm like, man, come on. <laughs> I, I too, used to say, man, whatever the white man says is what goes. If the white man didn't say it, then I can't buy it. But when you find rare books and everything, you realize the white man did say it, but it's the leadership and countries and everything that, you know, that try to uh, manipulate history to suit themselves. And the truth is, you know, black the black man was everywhere. If you doubt in Asia, all you got to do is look at a Buddha, original ones, and you can see he was not only black, but the hair. See, so, you know, people can get away with the face feature, facial features because a lot of Asians have what they call black facial features, and obviously, that's for a reason. But obviously, people say, wait, but the Asians... Their hair is uh, very straight. The Bushmen, their hair is about as kinky as it gets or, or as dry as it gets. Well, that's when you look at the Buddha and you can see the peppercorn hair, as they call it, on the Buddha, the original Buddhas. Now, later on, they started changing the Buddhas to wavy hair, mixed race hair, and even straight. Now, you got your Buddhas between, you know, all those Asian countries, including India. And of course, the East Indians, as I always say, they're, they are part of the black family. Don't listen to the white man. I mean, he just wants to separate all black peoples. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Alquan, you are trying to separate the black peoples when you talk about the Caribbeans and the Africans and how black Americans need to stay away from them. You damn right I'm, I'm talking about separation in that regard because we need to get our thing together. And if others don't like that, that means that you are haters. That's that's what it means. You are doing your thing, and I don't mind that. But if you're not sharing, step back, let us do our thing. See, when you don't want us to do our thing, that means something. But anyways, the East Indians, they are black. Blacker than me. Blacker than most people I've ever known in my life. Uh, so, you know, the white man... You, you, you can't believe him. See, his thing is, I keep trying to simplify human history to let you know what's going on today and what has been going on. It was an all-black world. Black people naturally created all civilizations because there was nothing but black people <laughs> throughout most of human history. The white man says uh, at least 100,000 to a million years ago. I think there were some uh, findings from South Africa of civilizations uh, about 100,000 years ago. Cave paintings, uh, underwater caves, and uh, a whole bunch of findings. And they say it's the Bushmen. Now, if you look all over, whether it's ancient Turkey, prehistoric Turkey, prehistoric it was called Anatolia because it was only called Turkey once the Turks uh, invaded. But um, prehistoric North Africa, you see the Bushmen. Europe, the Bushmen. Everywhere you go, you see them. They were, they were here first, technically. Uh, the white man still can't explain the darkest skinned black people. Yeah, we have to wait for him because he owns all the universities. He took over all the land. So he's in charge of all the booty, so to speak, the artifacts. The only others that are in charge of their own are the Asians with enough power to fend off the white man, like the Chinese. Even the Japanese can't really fend off the white man because they, you know, they're in an archipelago. So that's kind of harder to fend people off. But if they wanted to, they can they can stomp some ass. They still have the highest technology out there. The Chinese, they just really uh, people think because of their numbers that they're big and bad. But like I tell you, the Chinese are not battle tested. You look at their army, you're like, oh man, they look organized. They got nice uniforms, nice guns. 
But you look around any country with a little bit of money and the ability to make their own uniforms and guns, they're going to have some nice guns and some nice uniforms. But they're not battle tested. You, you put the Chinese army in Africa, they look powerful. Put them side by side with other countries, they may not look as powerful, but you have to put them to the test. But the main thing I'm trying to get at is that the black man was here well before the white man. You can see the cave paintings in Europe 30,000 years ago, 40,000 years ago. It was a different world. Now, according, according to the white man, writing began approximately 5,000 years ago. Give or take a few hundred years. First, he says it's either Mesopotamia or ancient Egypt. I mean, you can really say that the uh, ancient Egyptian writing and the Mesopotamian writing and the Chinese writing show great similarities in structure or presentation at the least. But a lot of black people get confused with Mesopotamia because you keep hearing the white man say things started there. But obviously, obviously, if you look at Sumer and you look at ancient Egypt, even prehistoric uh, Egypt, as they call it, Egypt still look more advanced. I mean, I've been I still been trying to figure out what was very advanced with Sumer. And I, I can't see it. You know, I've been studying it for years. And I can't see it. The only thing the white man says is that they stopped becoming nomads and settled and started farming. And then they produce writing. On the one hand, the white man says it's the first writing. But it's incomplete compared to what the white man wants to say uh, writing is, which is as it is written is as it sounds. Because there was writing well before uh, I guess you can call it phonetic uh, writing. Uh, even Egypt, before the actual, you know, modern hieroglyphs, if you if you want to call it that, the actual hi hieroglyphs, they actually had writing that looked similar to the hieroglyphs, but they weren't what the white man, and uh, I say what the white man says because... It's the white man who put the rules out there. You know, it's according to the white man, the uh, prehistoric Egyptian writing wasn't uh, as you would pronounce it. In other words, whatever the language is, if it's written down, it would be written down like if you see Spanish. However, it's written, that's how it sounds. Whereas basic writing for communication, they might say something like, This man goes here to worship. You know, that's not really giving you an idea of how it's pronounced and how somebody would say it if it's written down. Versus if they said, <clears throat> this man actually saying this goes here to this specific place to worship. It would be specific. Whatever the language is, that's how it would sound. So it's just generalities and, uh, and, and communication. I still consider that writing because it's written communication. But the white man calls it, he doesn't say that that's official writing because... It is not written. I don't even want to use the word verbatim because to get the idea across, that's kind of verbatim. But when you're talking about, you know, the, the actual language, how it would sound, that's, that's how people can figure out the languages of other people is by the writing. You know, how, you know how the Egyptian words sound. I'm not even going to try and act like I'm one of these other people and try to uh, act like I'm speaking the actual shit and, and, and communicating with some motherfuckers that ain't here. You know what I mean? Like some people that... 
ta 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 all that kind of shit trying to act like I'm some uh, master linguist I ain't, I ain't even trying to, <laughs> to get into all that craziness but you get the idea of what I'm saying so again we know these people were black because it's clear cut black Freemasons they need to argue with their white counterparts and ask how come you want us to to worship Egypt as a part of your Freemasonry but you want to keep trying to whiten the shit up that's what I want to hear from black Freemasons. Every time I ask the question, people get in the way of an answer. It's as if they don't want people to answer. Some people say, well, we're different Masons. We're uh, Prince Hall. Prince Hall couldn't get down with the white man, so he created his own. Why would he do that? And if he created his own, why is it modeled after the white man? And why does he work in concert with the white man? Why do you take orders from the white man? See, black Freemasons, you got a lot of explaining to do. Because this is a topic I like to bring up a lot. Why do you let the white man change the image of the uh, Egyptians from black to white? And of course, the white man is an insecure liar because why would he have to? See, if you're interested in the truth, you tell it as it is. Why? I mean, to go out and actually make, I call them cartoons, and put a white or compromising complexion on ancient Egyptians to have them resemble modern, mulattoized Turkish Egyptians. They're not even Arabs, they're Turks. And again, this is to help put the white Jew and make him seem like he's credible. And like he's from the region when he's not. I tell you, man, they always say you have to, you know, cover up a small lie with an even bigger lie. And this is what happens. But for now, and even with all the books, that's why people better make copies of all uh, pictures and books. Matter of fact, if I feel like it, I might actually, because I used to collect a whole lot of Egyptian books and a whole bunch of other books. One, I still never got back from this guy, man. That was over 10 years ago, man. But I guess that's a loss. But other books I did keep. I might upload some pictures. But, you know, the white man is funny, man. He wants to convince you that dark-skinned people in Africa, before the white man appeared on the scene, while the black people were in control of their own destiny in their own world, he wants you to think that these are just dark-skinned people, but not African. <laughs> in Africa. Even though their culture is African. It's not an external culture. But Egyptian culture spread throughout a whole lot of nations, a whole lot of uh, different realms. You know, it's just like uh, New York, or even the U.S., it spreads out and people are influenced whether they want to be or not. You know, that's just the way it is, man. New York is popular. It has influence. Egypt was the top of the uh, uh, food chain in countries. Common sense tells you that it had influence because you see what happened when the Romans and the Greeks went there and the Persians. They went and conquered but they took up the Egyptian ways. Was it because they feared a, a revolt? Or was it because they said, damn, aspects of what they're doing is better than what we're doing? You know? Or was it because they figured, well, we'll take some of what they're doing and incorporate it with our ways, and then that way they'll accept our rule? Could be a number of reasons, but when you look at other parts of the Roman Empire... I don't see the Roman Empire accepting other people's ways that they conquered. I see Rome forcing their ways on the other people. Now, of course, like I always say, Carthage, the, which is the Roman armor, that's where the uh, Roman armor came from. It came from Carthage. That's why you always see Hannibal dressed up as a Roman. 
But the white man doesn't tell you these things because then you start saying, oh, so black people had that sophisticated looking armor before the white man did. How can they don't show you Roman armor during the Punic Wars? They never do. Maybe I'll track that down. But see, these are the kind of, kinds of questions I like answers to because this will give you a better idea of the truth. But of course, that Hannibal bust, like I always say, that famous one, that's fake. But I always say, note how he has the beard and how he has the curly hair. The white man lies, but at the same time, he's kind of telling you Hannibal wasn't black, but he, I mean, was black, but he doesn't want to tell you that he was outright. He just wants to imply that he was something else. But of course, he wouldn't have that curly hair. If the, if the white man made his hair curly, then you know what his hair must have really been. Because you just look at those NFL Hall of Fame busts and tell me what they leave out and what they don't leave out. So, you know, it's just funny how the white man has the nerve to lie before the world. But a lot of Negroes, they just accept it. But this is why I say you Freemasons, you have a choice. Is the, are these white Freemasons your brother when they're uh, lying to you and saying, you know, you Negroes don't count? Is this part of the brotherhood that you're talking about? Because I don't see the brotherhood in this. Brotherhood would be telling the truth. And uh, that's that. Because you're going to have to explain <clears throat> why it is that the white man will tell you that the masses of people are stupid. We as Freemasons are smarter. But yet, this is why we lie to the people, but why are you changing around black people? How can you not change it around other people? You gotta ask yourselves these questions, even with the Moors. I mean, it's clear cut that the Moors were black. You even have some Negroes, yes, even... The Henry Clarks of the world who want to uh, appease the white man and say, well, not all the Moors were black. Well, I tell you this, black people, if you accept people like Obama as black, then all, all the Moors were black. The only Moors that were not black were the ones who were Germanic and got turned into Muslims, captured as slaves or what have you and got turned into Muslims, which you can see. Now, it depends if I had time to put the pictures up while I'm doing all this, uh, you know, I might put them, put, put them up. Excuse me. I might put them up. <laughs> if I do, then you'll, you know, you'll be able to see all this for yourselves. Uh, but see, people take pictures, they manipulate the meaning and the time period and make you think Muslims were white to begin with. See, what the white man doesn't want to tell you is that white people got conquered by Islam. But white people were still cognizant of the fact that they're white and something in the white man made them go against the black man. And the white Turks eventually toppled the black Arabs. And uh, they outnumbered them to begin with. So... This is why you see these light, bright, damn near white people all over so-called countries that are called Arab countries. And uh, like I said, I'm going to be doing a collaboration, which will make everything clear. So be on the lookout while I'll tell you when that comes up. So once we get into all that, everything will be clear. But you got to use common sense. I know it's hard because the white man's propaganda, his media keeps showing you Palestinians that are white style. Uh, everybody in the Levant, white style, Egyptian government, white style, all so-called Arab uh, governments, white style, even though there are black ones, too. Like I said, watch an Arab League meeting and <laughs> ask yourself, who's the Arab? But, like I say, the Turks never left. That's the, that's the key thing you always have to remember. The Turks never left. And because of that, all they did was rebrand themselves as Arabs. That's it. 
I'm going to get deep into it because everything or a great many things that you think is Arab culture is actually Turkish culture. That's why you never hear the white man talking about the Turks much. You never hear so-called Egyptologists or Kemetans or anybody else talking about the Turks. And instead, they just play stupid. Maybe because they are, or maybe because they don't know about the Turks, or maybe because they want to leave the Turks out, but they just keep talking about Arabs. These people want to talk, act like they're so intelligent, but they say Arabs took over Egypt. Arabs took over North Africa. How come these Arabs need an interpreter to understand each other? Explain that. How come they don't look alike? Explain that. If the if the Ottoman Turks had uh, rejected Islam and came up with a different religion, there would be no Arabic today, or nothing called Arabic. Well, like I said, when I get into this collabo, we're gonna get deeper into that. Um, but again, man, there were different periods in history. It's hard for everybody to believe that there was a world without a white man running the show. Because we see now that the white man is running everything. And that's why he does what he does around the world to make sure he keeps running things. He tries to stop other countries from uh, getting nuclear weapons or taking over another country to get an empire or anything like that. He's trying to keep what he had or keep what he took. So a lot of us, we can't imagine the world before the white man. All we have to do is rewind the clock. We can even rewind it just 200 years ago. But especially 500 years ago, we can go back to 1492 and we can uh, see the state of the white man. The Portuguese, they were the first white people to leave Europe and the Mediterranean area. And even they weren't all that white, by the way. A lot of them still look black. But they were the first ones to leave out and go to other parts of Africa and the other parts of the world. Before that, the white man was confined to the Mediterranean, Europe, and the so-called Middle East and Asia. <clears throat> Western Asia. That was it. It was after the Moors got defeated. That's when the white man and the white style man started going beyond their uh, confines. And uh, because, see, in 1492, I'll tell you where the white man was not at. To give you a better way of uh, putting it. The white man was not in the Americas. So you could take all that Latino shit out of there. Take all that Anglo stuff out of there. The white man was not in most of Africa. The white man, like I said, he was in the so-called Middle East and he was in North Africa. The Turks. White man wasn't in Madagascar, but some Asians were. The white man wasn't in most of Asia, for that matter. But once he broke loose, I'll give it up to the white man too because he did fight the Moors and he kept the fight on until he won. Apparently, black people gave up after a while or their numbers are greater. See, that's why I always say when black people say we outnumbered the white man. First of all, Asians outnumbered the white man the most. That's why the white man is trying to partner up with them because he knows the future war with them and they have the army, they have the intelligence, and they have the endurance. As you saw in Vietnam and Korea and even Japan. The white man doesn't want that war. So it's better to be friends instead of uh, being enemies. But as I observe Asians... I could tell that they're still realizing, damn it, we got the, we, we got the uh, advantage on the white man. All we have to do is just keep on churning them out 
see, they churn people out. That is reproduced at a great rate. And educate their people at the same time. That's what you have to do. Black people just go around making babies. Well, black Americans go around making babies and not educating anybody. That's not productive. That's not doing anything. But after a while, there will be a war between the white man and the Asians. After a while, this African thing, we're going to see where that's going. As of now, I say that the white man, uh, the Chinese man is uh, building what he's building in Africa just to help him get around Africa better. So, you know, history is what it is. This is is why I say when you read history as compiled by the white man. And once again, I got to make it clear because the white man colonized countries. So he dug in. He made records of history as it was for some real, some fake. But the main thing to look for is what people did, what happened. Don't rely on the white man to tell you what those people were. Because he will lie. He has lied. If these busts of Nefertiti don't tell you that he's a a, a liar, I don't know what else to tell you. Now, there are some people... Uh, what's the best way to put this? There are a lot of Egyptian crazy people and Afrocentrics who give up easily. That means you don't believe in what you believed in and you don't want to concede that you were wrong. But they'll say, hey, Nefertiti, Cleopatra 7, and 8. (laughs) They'll say, uh, you know what? I'll let the white man have them. That's your way of saying, okay, I was wrong. I'm not going to call them African. I'm not going to call them black. Just because the white man wants to raise uh, raise the question. The white man can't prove that they were white. So you don't have to concede a damn thing to the white man. Cleopatra. Again, I always say this. The most famous people in history. When you can't find artifacts on these people. I'm sure they're out there, but the white man just didn't let it be known. Hannibal, Cleopatra, Hebrew Israelites. Uh, Well, the Phoenicians, you can dig, you can find those. And and the one I always bring up that people don't think about, Persian-occupied Egypt. I bring that up, I, I have to keep bringing that up. You can find a few artifacts See, me, I could tell who, you know, from the art style, who was who and what was what. But Persian occupied Egypt, the white man clearly suppresses that. Because that tells you clear cut without a doubt that the Persians were black and they took over a black Egypt. It's clear cut. But that's why the white man suppresses it, because then you'll see that it's both black people, Persians with fucking Afros. That's this is why I don't concentrate on Africa for black people and black history like the Afrocentrics do. Because they keep talking about Africa and they act like once you step foot out of Africa, everybody's something else other than black. And you fall into the white man's trap. And the white man's trap is blacks come from so-called sub-Saharan Africa. And I hate when black people bring that up too. And these are, I can tell these are ignorant black people who don't know what black people in the Sahara look like. (laughs) I mean, hopefully if I had the time, I'm going to put pictures up as I speak. Hopefully I'll do that. Um, But black people are here, man. I mean, they're everywhere. The white man wasn't around. That's what you have to keep in mind. It's hard for you to believe it. And it's also hard for you to believe that the white man is not from Europe. But again, how did the Roman Empire become an empire? 
the Romans, the Latins, I mean, you could read it from the, own, the white man's own history. They went into Italy. If they went into Italy, that means they came from someplace else. But of course, I know what you're thinking. Well, they invaded another white people because it is Europe, after all. That's the homeland of the white man, right? Use your brain. Italy and Spain are right next to Europe. If you figure Hannibal and Carthage was black, I notice a lot of black people don't like to touch on that because they're not sure themselves because they're, th they're conflicted between the white man's lies and common sense. They'll say that the Moors were black and they were in Spain, but a lot of them aren't prepared to say that Hannibal and Carthage was black. Well, let me tell you something. Hannibal and his uh, Carthaginian empire that encompassed the territories of the Moors, including Spain. So, <laughs> who's black and who's not black, man? Let's, let's get real. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it one way. It's either all or nothing. Italy, the Roman Empire didn't even get into Africa until they defeated the, uh, Carthage. And like I say, during the Punic Wars, the Ptolemy dynasty was in effect in Egypt. You got to keep that in mind. A lot of these Negroes, they don't like telling you these things either because they don't know or because they don't want you to think. Because when you start thinking... Then you start wondering, okay, who was who? Hannibal and Carthage, they were black. They were black Europeans. That's, this, is, this is what the Romans were taking over. The Etruscans were black. That's where they got their Latin script from, out of Rome, from the Etruscans. They were black. You can't deny that. They weren't just dark. Europeans? I mean, come on, when's the last time you've seen a dark white man uh, appro approaching Chris Rock uh, uh, darkness? Matter of fact, shit, you had those black Europeans that were looking like Chris Rock. And that's no lie. Hopefully I'll put them up. Man, I, I might be uh, into it enough to put it up. But you never seen one of these. If you do, I never heard one call themselves a, a white man. But see, there's no such thing as a dark white man or an olive-complected white man. You can't be dark and a white man. That's number one. But number two, like you take that Jimmy Garoppolo of the 49ers. Come on, some people might say he's white, but he's too damn dark to be white. And you can look at his nose. You look, look at his jet black hair and especially his skin tone. Come on, man. That's that black legacy. These are mixed people, man. Mixed people. The white man doesn't want to admit this, so he just calls... He used to say these things, though. But he changed his strategy up. Because when the lies catch up, catch up to you, you got to change the strategy up. So... All he did was switch these people over and say, okay, they're, they're white now. They're caucasoid. And then when you challenge the white man, he says, well, caucasoid doesn't mean white. What the fuck are you calling somebody a caucasoid for? You're implying white. They say, oh, they can be dark, dark and white. Those are two different motherfuckers, man. You can't have a dark skin. Wesley Snipe style and a pink man, blue eyes, yellow hair, Vladimir Putin style. They can't be the same people. Only if you are so terrified of the white man that you say, you know what? I'll accept it because the white man says so. See, what you do is you look in the books and you look up racism and, and all that kind of stuff. And you see that the white man, th th these are his categories that he created. 
This is not nature. This is not the natural order of things. This is what the white man created. He thought about it. And he said, this is what I'm putting together. And of course, when you put something together, you're going to make sure that you uh, put yourself in the mix and make, make sure that you're uh, important. He says the three major groups are Mongoloid, Caucasoid, and Negroid. See, right off the top, you should say to yourself, wait a second. If the white man says blacks never created civilization, never did nothing important on the planet, why would one of the major groups of races be a so-called Negroid, which means black-like? Negro, Negroid, black-like. Mongoloid, mon looking like the Mongols, because that's the one group that the white man had contact with that looked like them. That's it. Asians range from black, Chinese style, Mongoloid style, black, to damn near all white. I mean, <laughs> come on, man. White man is a liar. And in Asia, a lot of Asians mix with the white man, mix with the black man. <clears throat> so this is what he'll do. And the other one is Caucasoid, which has no meaning at all. It just means looking like some people from the Caucasus, which of course does not mean all. But there were black people in the Caucasus, so maybe that's how the white man is getting a little slick. So, again, you can't believe the white man. These Caucasus, three major races thing, this is um, all made up have to keep in mind it's the white man making these things up just like when you read something that the Egyptians made up and you people accept that the Egyptians made the thing up it's the same thing with the white man you roll you make some new rules Roman they roll all of a sudden you got September October August <laughs> all these months that they name after themselves I mean come on Saturday they're naming these things after themselves and you accept their rule when the Germanics took over they had to uh, adopt some of that because you know it was orderly but of course when the Germanics took over then of course they started changing things around to favor themselves like Thor's day Thor's day after their god of Thor god of Thor in case people are thinking I made a mistake um so the Germanics, they, they kind of put themselves in the mix, so to speak. And this is what all rulers do. They say, okay, the last people ruled, even if they had something better than me, I'm going uh, to put my face in it. We all know how the, the Greeks and Egypt started changing and putting their faces on things. We, we acknowledge that. How come we can't acknowledge that this white man does this? It should be common sense, man. I mean... <laughs> I just don't understand this. It's pretty common sense. Here we go. Another white man getting nervous to see me in the car. Got all this shit. He's like, oh, shit, this guy's here. Uh, I'm nervous about locking my car. Look at that. Opening and closing his door multiple times. <laughs> These guys are something else, man. Motherfucker driving a Camry, like I'm. I mean, come on. Anyways, the white man lies, and the white man is paranoid of his lies. Look at this guy, man. If I can film this, man, <laughs> this guy locking his doors multiple times. I'm in the car. Look at it. now. He's checking his front. I mean, you didn't do all. Come on, this guy's full of shit. Anyways. <clears throat> The three races of man, this is as created by white people. And other times, you had other races of man. Now, I've seen uh, the Sarnetta thing with the Jabari using the uh, Sheikh Anta Diop's uh, reproduction of a Egyptian races of man thing. And... Uh, it's because the show that these guys aren't too well versed and they carry on some BS. But in other times, they were different, uh, 
different people had different notions of races, but everybody knew about a black or a white or an Asian. And white is not really a different race. They're mutated people. Nation of Islam says they're grafted people. But, you know, that's a kindergarten explanation of what really happened. But at the same time, it's similar to what happened. See, the white man tells you that the black man was here first because he said all life began in Africa about a million years ago. So, again, think one million years. Think of what happened in the last 500 years and how the world was different. One million years. They say black people are dumb. Black people don't know how to do this. Don't know how to do that. Well, damn it. How did black people survive for a motherfucking million years with all these crazy ass creatures around? Poisons. Snakes. I mean, you think about the creatures that were around a million years ago. Woolly mammoths. Saber toothed cats. Shit, there could have been remnants of some dinosaur-like creatures. Some creatures were a lot bigger. And black and people were running around with no clothes on. So they had to survive. I'm sure they had more of an animalistic instinct because they had to develop tools to, to survive. They had to survive the winters, the seasons, the climate, getting the water and fish because they were fishing. And you know... <laughs> And the oceans and the rivers, man, there could be some some scary ass fish in there, man. <laughs> shit, you might uh be more at least me, I might be more concerned about shit in the in the rivers and the oceans and shit than in, on land. I mean, at least with the bear, if you had the right tools and shit, you could take the bear out. And you know people took bears and cats out because you could see them wearing the furs and, and, and the trinkets from the animals. So apparently killing animals was no thing. So you got to think about this. The black man was here first, so they had to survive all these years up until in ancient Egypt. And according to the black man, see somebody on one show was talking about the how they found a Libyan baby mummified. And, uh, you know, that was one of the first inklings or evidence that the white man found of pre-Egyptian mummification in a culture. And they try to make a big deal out of it by saying, oh, the kid was black. Well, I mean, it's Africa. before Long before a white man even came in on the scene. So, of course, they would be black. You look at the drawings of prehistoric North Africa, you can see that the people were uniformly black. Not a whole bunch of different colors. I mean, again, even with King Tut, how they reproduce that uh, skull. And you notice how the latest Nefertiti, Nefertiti bust is similar to the last King Tut bust. Why do they keep changing them around? All you have to do is go by what the Egyptians uh, put out and disregard the white man. Because the white man, does, don't, don't listen to his words. That might sound fancy and sound complicated to you by saying, we've used forensic scientists. We've scanned the actual skull. We did this. We did that. Nobody ever asked them, motherfucker, where'd you come up with the skin tone? Did you get that from the skull too, man? Nobody wants to ask him that. And you can look at that Today Show clip when he was at, when they were talking about, we got this from the actual skull and all that. Look at look at the guy's eyes. He's looking down. He can't face the lady because <laughs> he's lying. That's why. And don't forget that lady, Hoda Kotib. She's from Egypt, by the way, in case people don't know. And as far as I could tell. You know, she accepts her blackness, as far as I can tell. Even though she does color her hair blonde, but, you know, she's dated black dude. So, as far as I know, she's uh accepts her blackness. But I don't think she's advertising it, but she accepts it. And a lot of people don't realize she's from Egypt. Because you see her as what we see her as. 
a normal everyday black woman because people are mixed. But see, here's the thing. People who say, well, let let the white man have Cleopatra, let him have Nefertiti. Who else do you want him to have? Because if you look at Hoda Khatib, if she were on an ancient Egyptian bust with her complexion, you going to let the white man have her too? You going to let him have, why don't you let the white man have Obama? <laughs> I mean, I don't understand this. So this is the problem with black people. You got to either stand strong or not stand at all. Don't give up because somebody might be lighter. Shit, I'm light. I'm not white. You going to let the white man have me too? I mean, come on. Where is it written? And I'm, I'm not trying to be divisive, but where is it written that the darker you are, the more black you are? Because you got to bring up the Bushmen. Dark, the darker they are, there's a limit to their darkness. So, <laughs> who's more African? That's that's the big question. The jet black man or the Bushmen? And I think a lot of black Afrocentrists and a lot of people like that, I don't think they want an answer to that question. See, I ask provocative questions because you need answers to a lot of these questions. And I don't think a lot of Afrocentrists want to answer that question. The white man might want an answer, but like I said, one thing that history shows clearly, and this is documented by the white man, is that the white man was not on the scene. This is why Elijah Muhammad, his story coincides with reality. You know, I'm sure he got this from his Freemason teachings, not from Fard Muhammad. That the white man really burst on the scene around 6,000 years ago. That's the truth, man. That's, that's, the way, that's the way history shows. And even the white man that you see was not the whitest man. Because the, the progeny of the white man is a red-haired, blue-eyed white man. And these people used to be more prevalent than they are in the world today. And they were more uniform. This is the white man. And then, then the other one is the blonde haired, blue eyed one. These are the prototypes of the white man, the progeny. Any other type is mixed. And yes, this is from albinism. Can't be denied. And like I try to prove to Uncle Tom House niggas is this. If the white man is not an albino, a mutant albino... Then show me the blonde haired, blue eyed Asian, white skinned Asian. Show that. Show the red haired, blue eyed, white skinned Asian. Show the red haired, blue eyed, white skinned African. The only ones you're going to find are the ones that are called albino. Am I lying or am I telling it like it is? Then, of course, others say, well, where'd the straight hair come from? Well, looks like it's Neanderthal, for all we know. White man claims that it's Asians and white man that has the most Neanderthal in them and Africans don't. So that might explain that. And East Indians are mixed, by the way. I keep telling you, East Indians are mixed. That's why you see some, they could be black, but they're hairy. You see a lot of Italians, hairy. So, you know, that comes from race mixing. But some people reproduce at a greater rate. That's why you see so many people in India and in China. And contrary to popular, popular belief, Africans don't seem to uh, reproduce at a, a great rate like that, you know? But, again, you know, we're dealing with a whole bunch of different uh, situations here, man. Um, the white man lies. Ancient Egyptians were not white. It's just that the white man is enthralled by the ancient Egyptian ways and, and the fact that they had what they had so long ago. I mean, everything that they had in ancient Egypt four or five thousand years ago is the basis of everything now. I mean, 
the everyday conveniences like razor blades, afro picks, beds, pillows, decorative homes, everything you could think of. You know, it's kind of sad when you see that they had all these things and then invasions and turmoil brought it to an end. And it's the good thing that a lot of this stuff was buried in the sand or it would, probably wouldn't have been as well preserved as it had been. But the artifacts are in foreigners' hands. This is why I challenge you Negro Freemasons to go to Africa and preach all this stuff. Because telling people in America that ain't doing nothing. You keep saying our ancestors. No, why don't you go to Sudan... Go to Egypt. Even go to Chad. Because, I mean, come on. You know, Egyptians had to go be in Chad, too. But so far, I haven't been able to locate any ancient stuff in Chad. I'm sure there has to be or had to have been. I mean, you look at look at the current uh, president of Chad. He still he looks like an ancient Egyptian him day himself. You put him and Anwar Sadat side by side. Man, they look like brothers, literal brothers. Same thing with a lot of the Sudanese. <clears throat> but you don't get that with Gaddafi, of course. You know? You don't get that with other Egyptian leaders. Look at King Farouk of Egypt. Or was that a Lib Libya? Probably both. One each. But those were the Turkish uh, people that left. They were white. Not Arab, they were white. So stop saying Arabs run Egypt. Arabs <laughs> don't run Egypt. Sadat Nasser, General Nagi, they knocked off the Egypt, the uh, Turkish uh, monarchy, and came to rule. And, and and Nasser declared Egypt a United Arab Republic, along with Syria. Who told them to become Arabs? Sadat and Nasser, they're not Arabs. You can see that Sadat is clearly an ancient Egyptian style, a little mixed with both of them, but shit, they're definitely darker. But, you know, I think it was all political with the Arab uh, identity thing. Because the white man clearly accepted that, but he didn't want them to, to become African. That's what I, I'm thinking. You know, but um, again, with the Cleopatra, uh, I mean, the Nefertiti thing, <laughs> you got to go by what the Egyptian show. That's what you go by. You don't go by what the white man show. It's just like uh, if you see a film of the JFK assassination. Yeah, I'm going to keep bringing it up <laughs> and uh, you see what happens. But somebody says, no, the driver shot JFK. Look. But all you really see is the driver turning his head. And somebody wants to convince you the driver shot him with a gun. And nobody else saw it. That was in the limo. And nobody else heard it. Heard a gunfire, even if it was a silencer. And how the driver had such impeccable aim. See, these are the things you got to uh, examine. Are you going to look at what you see or are you going to believe what somebody else wants you to believe? This is how people lie. I did the brain. I don't even know if I put it up about the brainwashing. This is how they do it. Even though you know in your heart what you're seeing is bullshit. But since the white man is trying to put on his case and say, hey, man, we did the forensics. This is from the skull. Now you look at King Tut. Or King Toot, as the Africans pronounce him. Look at his mummy. Then look at that mulatto eyes, that fan fantasy uh, bust that they created. They didn't even recreate his overbite either. They just made his mouth small. I mean, this is all all out lies. And you black Freemasons, you got to answer this, man. Um, You look at his actual mummy, you can see that he's a clear... Sudanese style black with the overbite I mean it's clear cut what the man is you know 
So we got to stop playing these games. And you think so that's why they recreated all these different people to try and say, OK, Nefertiti was King Toot's mother. See the uh, similar skin tone? Now show Akhenaten and Queen T. They don't like showing them. Now, King Toot was pretty dark, black. How was that his mother looking like that? They even changed the facial features from the Berlin bust, which many say could be fake. But the point is, they still changed it around. Feature wise, they try. I, I guess they try to make people feel happy, like, oh, well, they didn't make the, the features uh, totally white, but they lighten up the skin color and the eyes. How did they know the eyes were light? This is what they just want to put out there. This is their uh, image that they want. Anything de black it. That's why when you guys keep mixing with whites, this will be your future. <laughs> I mean, and after a while, you can't deny it. I say, look at Puerto Ricans. That'll give you an idea. I'm telling you. So, we know it's fake, but you free black Freemasons, we need to hear from you when you get on TV. That's what we need to hear. Damn the movies talk about this real life stuff. White man has some nerve trying to say, hey, this is what we're declaring. After a while, he's going to uh, start making everybody uh, white. <laughs> you know, some people said they'll start making Martin Luther King white. Well, they already made him British. So, you know, that's one step away. You black people with money, man, you better uh, put some money, man, in, in, into our history or, or else it's a done deal, man. You're going to have to uh, go over to one of these countries that you uh, cherish and start teaching them the, the ways of Amun-Ra. Because they're the only ones who would make the difference with that. Teaching us this shit, all you're doing is trying to teach us Freemasonry, which is a waste of time. So you black guys better get it together. Because um, time is running out, man. If they can make the blackest Egyptians look uh, white, who's next? I mean, again, with Egypt, I'm going to close this out there in one hour and two minutes. But with Egypt, <clears throat> you got to understand, man, this was before the white man stepped on the scene. We see that the ancient Egyptians painted themselves black. Made their bus black. No white people look like that. <laughs> I mean, come on. And a lot of the people in Egypt, con uh, popular to contrary belief. A lot of those light skinned ones are mixed. A lot of those North Africans are mixed, but they're mixed over thousands of years or at least 1500 years. And uh, this is why you see some look like Puerto Ricans because Puerto Ricans are mixed. Some are darker type mulattoes. Others are just plain all white. You know? Mixed. Mixed, and some are not even uh, African at all, but we could tell. But see, here's the thing with black people. And I've noticed this about black people over the years. When somebody is dark with kinky hair, you call them black. When they're dark with straight hair, you've been trained to think that there's something other than black. Unless... They're in Africa. <laughs> then all of a sudden you, you, you're fooling yourself into thinking or you're trying to brainwash yourself into thinking, okay, these people are black because they are in Africa. But if they're black with straight hair and they're in Asia, you've been trained by the white man to believe, hey, these aren't black people. But yet they are black. Jabari who was a boule show pictures of two Ethiopian guys to talk about a nose. Those weren't even a prime example of a straight nose any damn way. And anybody can look at those Ethiopians and say, Hey man, I wouldn't call those Africans. 
See, he should have showed you some jet black uh, people with straight noses. Straighter noses than those. But see, these guys always got something to hide. They play ignorant at uh, certain times and they uh, try to be smart at other times. <clears throat> so, you know, black people aren't clear on what black is. Sometimes you want your own definition. Other times you want to, uh, most times you want to stick by what the white man has told you. Black is. Black is what the white man said it is. Depending on the situation. You know, in this country, black people say, well, one drop, you're black. And that's because the white man says so. It's not something black people came up with. That's something the white man came up with. When it's Obama, you say he's white. He's black. Tariq Nasheed's wife, yeah, I'm throwing that in. <laughs> She's black. Uh, people joke around and say, I'm not black. You have other mixed people if they lean towards white in appearance oh well I can't accept that as black uh what's my man damn I forgot who it was but people say Steph Curry is light skinned even though he's not half and half but then they call Clay Thompson light skinned black man even though he is half and half and then if you say, no, he's not, then you say, well, his father was black. So that makes him black. But then you look at Lenny uh, Kravitz, who looks blacker than Clay Thompson. They're both mixed, half and half. But some people will say, well, Lenny Kravitz is not black because his father was white. <laughs> so even though Lenny Kravitz looks whiter, looks blacker than Clay Thompson, and shit, he looks blacker than a lot of black people uh but see that's the funny part black people aren't sure what black is if a black mixed person says i'm not black then you'll have black people saying yeah this person's black man why are they lying but if uh that same person is in North Africa. Matter of fact, let's stick with a Clay Thompson. Let's keep that look in your mind. If Clay Thompson were from, let's just say, Morocco, you can also keep French Montana in your mind too. Let's say Clay Thompson were from Morocco. His name was Abu Muhammad. Picture and accent. He was an uh, ace NBA player from Morocco. In your mind, you would think, oh, he's not a nigger. That's, that's how most of you would talk. He's not one of us. But since he's in this country, half black, half white, last name Thompson, you say, okay, automatically he's one of us. So, again, with the Nefertiti bust, going with the white man's reproductions, or the Berlin bus, which some say is a reproduction, which is certainly lighter than the original Egyptian carvings. Because she is dark brown in the original Egyptian carvings. You know, the white man has, a, has had a whole bunch of fakes to inject himself, or at least to try and, in my word, de uh the greatest people in history. But there's just too much for him to try and de-blackalize. So he'll take it step by step. But again, some black people say, give the white man Nefertiti. Why would you want to give the white man Nefertiti? How come you don't give the white man Clay Thompson? How come you don't give the white man Steph Curry? I mean, come on. You can't make these arguments because the original Nefertiti was clearly black. And if she was King Tut's mother, King Tut was a black man. So you just can't say, hey, give the white man these things. Just because you ran out of arguments, you don't know how to defend it. Just because you read somewhere <clears throat> that Nefertiti 
was from a foreign land. Well, I got news for you. The Egyptians and other kingdoms had slave wives from other lands or they were donated as gifts, so to speak. So that happens a lot. Chancellor Williams says it was the breakdown, uh, the blackness and insert others. Yeah, I mean, it's also a peace offering. You know, a lot of people can't fathom that these days that somebody would give up their daughter to be somebody's concubine. But if they can't became somebody's queen. Then that's an inside person. Doesn't mean she's always reporting back because she would probably have been turned out and flipped out by then. But as a part of a harem, that's the way it always is. You look at, you can go on YouTube today and you can see that there are Somalis who are going into, I think it was Bangladesh, and buying brides. <laughs> going into India, buying brides. Other Arabs going into India and buying bride, brides. Light ones on top of that, not dark ones. So you keep doing that and you keep uh, dealing with Indians, then what do you think the hair is going to look like and stuff like that? Eventually, these are going to be some dark Africans with some light hair. I mean, uh, straightish hair. So these things happen. But here's the kicker. During the time of Nefertiti, other countries, Turkey was not filled with so-called Turks. They were filled with black people. The Levant, black. Canaan, black. The Bible says Canaan was black. Phoenicians, black. If the Bible says these things, why are you going by the white man? The Bible says these people are part of Ham. Arabia, black. During those times, nobody was able to invade Arabia. The Turks were the first ones to, to actually take Arabia. Persians had the, the, the East Coast. Sometimes Greece and Roman had the West Coast. The coast, though. And the West Coast was but so much, but the East Coast was more, you know, taken for uh, a lot of times. But... <clears throat> These were black people. So if they came in from foreign lands, they were black. Some people, like I said, we've been trained to think that Africa is where black people are at. And once you step foot outside of Africa, it's somebody else. Like I said earlier, common sense. Sicily is in between Europe I know Sicily is now part of Europe, but before it was a part of Africa when the Africans had it. But Sicily is in between Italy and Tunisia. Morocco and Spain, I believe that was nine miles apart. Let's get real. You think on the European side that the people would go from black to white just because it's called Europe? You gotta use your common sense, your brain. This is why the white man desperately keeps trying to tell you that North Africans were not black and are not black and blacks are in Sub-Saharan Africa. And that's where they're confined to. But the white man's lies are easily busted when you see the ancient Greeks that were black with Afros. You see the ancient Egyptians. You see the Moors. You see ancient Europeans that were jet black. Okay, if black people are confined to so-called sub-Saharan Africa, where did these other black people come from? Then when you argue with the racists, they say, those are not Negroes. <laughs> those are Caucasoids. Okay, well, why do they look black then? Caucasoid doesn't mean white. That's why. What the fuck does it mean? Then? It means lies. That's what the hell it means. So we just have to use common sense. So I've been reading it for decades, man. <clears throat> and looking at pictures, analyzing the facts. 
to the point when I was in college, I, yeah, I wanted to be an uh, African studies, uh, black studies guy. But then when I got there, I, I kept saying to myself, okay, but what am I going to do with that? You know, I, I wouldn't mind writing some books on the matter. You know, people want to donate to help that out. Like I said, we want to get into everything. But, you know, I'll tell you this. The, um... Whole bunch of lies out here, man. But you got to use common sense. You keep studying. Keep using common sense. You got to study the white man's migration patterns. Once you realize that the white man is not from Europe, that will free your mind up into realizing that everybody around Egypt was not something else. See, when they do show you some light skinned individuals, these were at later dates as the white man kept approaching and kept mixing with other people, black people. And if you don't believe that, just look at Puerto Ricans. You can even look at Dominicans. When the mulattoes mix with each other, what do they start looking like? Yellow skin with straight hair. Think of the girl who killed Steve McNair. Look at her. If you change her name to Maria Gonzalez, that's what you would think she was. Because this is race mixing. People think mixing races means one parent, first generation mixing. One black parent, one white parent. That's what people think of, uh, of when people are thinking about mixed. They don't think you repeat the process over hundreds of years and thousands of years with the same type of people. Then you get a more refined look. That's why when you look at a lot of North Africans, you see different types in the phenol in the facial uh, uh, in the face. But you'll see some with clear African style facial features. Others what what the white man calls white style facial features. And some of those may be dark, darker people. Some of those may be lighter people. Then you see clear cut white people. Then you see clear cut black people. You know, you have, that's why I use the terms white style, black style. Because that means they're more black but mixed, or more white but mixed, white looking but mixed. You know, and these things happen. A lot of people are mixed, man. But it's what people are called, that's what confuses people. When people are called Latino, and their name is Jose Suarez. And all of a sudden, people think, okay, that's not black. Uh, <laughs> when they're called uh, Abdul Muhammad and they're from Arabia, you think, oh, okay, that's somebody else. I'm telling you, man, look up Arab League member states, man. You'd be surprised which country is in the Arab League. But once you realize what an Arab is and is not, which is difficult. Because you have to really do years and years of research. Because you keep getting thrown off. And the white man does this intentionally. He'll throw you off as to what a real Arab is and a real Arab is not. And you'll come to find out that the white man can't tell you what that is. Arabs themselves can't tell you what that is. And with some, you bring up Turks. Like I, I Sometimes I debate with people who are from Egypt. You bring up Turks, they're like, nah, nobody's a Turk here. And in their mind, they're thinking Turkish, a citizen from Turkey, the nation of Turkey. They're thinking, well, I don't speak Turkish. <laughs> Man, it was only like 50, 60 years ago that the Turks were ruling Egypt. I mean, come on. This is not something you have to think about. Well, you shouldn't have to think about it. So, you know, again, man, we got to use common sense, but TV, media is propaganda. And before I go, damn, this is an hour and 19. I can't believe I'm going this long. Before I go, propaganda is spread by a lot of people, large and small, media, large and small, but they're all in, in the same group. Just like with the Black Panther, whenever they talk about these movies. It's advertising. They're, they're Freemasons ordered to, to talk about these things. That's why you had no uh, Black Panther advertising for me. 
they try to put more into this Black Panther than what is in there. It's a damn comic book, man. But they try to hype it up to get you to go see it, and this is they're they're paid and they're ordered to do this by the Freemason Brotherhood, so that the movie will be successful, which it has been. Not gonna lie, it did look kind of cool, but I'm not putting it down. But I'm just trying to say. When these guys talk about these movies and try to talk about decoded and all that kind of stuff, they're advertising it. They're doing the work of their masters. So they love their masters more than they love their people. That's something to really think about. And if they love their masters more than their people, why do they keep getting us to think about race, the white man, and everybody else? Think about it. 